Good. Good. Mike seems to be working again, and I'm going to hand up the mic to Michael in a minute. Uh, so tonight our phone guests are two YouTube stars, so you can see them in their on their channel almost every day uh, doing a gig in I think either your garage or Michael's garage where you're working on your one of your projects and your projects that's something you're going to talk about now. Thanks. Okay. Uh, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, I don't know if this is working. No, it's not. This one is working. Oh, this one is working. Yeah, this one is working. We're not going to talk simultaneously now. Okay. Nothing. I think that one works. Also, just shout. Yeah, but you can you can give it. You can hand it over too. I think the battery is dead. Yeah, if they don't see from our room. It's very loud. Uh, <coughs> you just try it, it works like all the way on. Does this work? Sometimes. If I talk like this, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. As usual. Yeah. Okay, um, so tonight we are talking about. Um, some different projects. The main project we're, we're talking about is uh, is locals of the world. Um, we are um, we are we have built like a, a project that is not very typical on on a blockchain in a blockchain space uh, because the most I mean, most of the things you hear about blockchain is uh, associated associated with um, uh, with fintech basically and, and these kind of things. Um, we work for A Labs. That's a, a sort of innovation lab, the digital innovation lab for the city of Antwerp, and we are exploring all kinds of new technology in a government context. So it was started about two years ago by Michael, so the, the initiative of A Labs uh, within the city, um, and through investigating all kinds of technologies, we stumbled upon uh, the blockchain and Ethereum in about I think it was September. Uh, Something. So, so how we started it? Uh, so, basically, Alabs was started with the idea of what happens when a nuclear power plant explodes in Antwerp. Like we have, you know, you guys know this in Holland, right? We have this duel with a nuclear plant in Antwerp. Yeah, you worry us. <laughs> yeah, we're worried too. Yeah, yeah. Just at, at least we get these pills. Uh, you know, I die. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, uh, no, but we were thinking like, okay, imagine that, you know, like, imagine like the worst scenario that can happen, like, you know, every building is, is, is flattened and, and nobody has a government anymore and services. So we started thinking at that point, like, what do people need when once they, you know, come come from under the rumble and, and the whole, the whole uh, uh, trash and stuff. So what, what would the first thing uh, be that they need in order to start up their community again um, and then um, so yeah now quickly we started thinking about okay it, it, it can't have a central point of failure of course um, it should be you know it shouldn't be able to censor it etc etc and we were trying to it was before Stefan came uh, so we didn't have even developers mm -hmm. back then um, and then um, we really started to kind of um, create something that resembled Ethereum but in a like really really silly way like almost on paper and in JavaScript and, and it was crap um, and then but it solves our problem because you know we, we, we knew that we have we need a data object that is, is distributed and stuff like that so we were looking into BitTorrent technology stuff like that and then suddenly Ethereum popped up. It was like, fuck yeah, this is the thing we need. It's exactly what we are trying to build, but these guys are way smarter than us. And um, so that's when we, you know, um, yeah, started building stuff because we, we have this principle that every two weeks, um, well, we used to have the principle that every two weeks we start a new project. So even if it isn't done or, or we, we didn't reach our goal, then okay, fuck it, next time we'll do better. And then, like the next two weeks, we would work on something completely different. Maybe the two weeks after that, we came back to a, a previous project. But once we uh, hired Stefan, uh, Sponet, 
um, yeah, we, we started building and we have been building on Ethereum um, for half a year, I think. Uh, and that's the project uh, locals that we want to show you now. Okay, so the thing is that we are trying, so instead of uh, uh, just taking another approach in the government sector, uh, we're looking how we can build communities using blockchain technology, basically. So we've been investigating that, um, what the possibilities uh, are. Okay, is it off? Oh, is it? Well, it's the first slide, is everyone okay with that? Is it is Amos? Is it Amos fast? Well, we do do things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have this all the time at home. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. The, the introduction of blockchain. I'm going to skip that because I assume you all know uh, this. Uh, also, this year. These are just some concepts that, so the, the parts that we are using of the like the public uh, website of Ethereum, uh, so <laughs> issuing your own cryptocurrency, um, doing crowdsourcing, sort of doing something with um, with own currencies, uh, creating these autonomous organizations. But yeah, I assume you all uh, heard of that. So since we have all the ingredients, like Michael said, we have. Uh, they have been developing things, similar things, but in Ethereum, all of these technologies came together. So we figured out that we had all the ingredients. So what are we going to, to build upon it? Uh, we, looked at, we looked at several other um, projects with its things that overlapped a little bit with the things we've done. For example, Colony, uh, which also tried to, to create groups of people, but in a context of doing work together, so starting virtual companies. We are not doing for profit work, we are just interested in creating these communities. Then obviously you have the, all, the, all the, the, the known uh, things, uh, this share in charge, they are doing something with um, renting out or uh, your charge stations for your electric car, so also doing that peer to peer. Uh, farm share, it's a CSA, and I always forget the acronym, it's community, blah, blah, uh, agriculture, I don't know what the S is for. So it's also sure. groups, um, groups of people organizing farms basically together. Uh, then yeah, obviously Arcade City, we are not involved in, in development of that, but this slide is even just from uh, from before that. Yeah, this slide you've also seen in the previous one. Um, so community building. Just remember to keep speaking. speaking yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, so for community, you need a number of uh, things. So the, the things we are trying to cover with uh, with the locals app is first of all the trust, uh, the the web of trust. Then the terms. So we have to make agreements uh, amongst people. What are the terms of our community? It can be a small community, just like a hobby club or something like that, or a small uh, local uh, organization. But they have some terms and some rules uh, to live by. You have to be able to exchange value. Uh, with each other, and you have to build reputation. But this is, this is not even, this is like in general, it's not like um, what should the community be on Ethereum, this is like, this is what a community is, you know, like in, in real life right now, this is what we would describe as a community. The people trust each other, they have certain agreements, they exchange value or they create value, and they, you know, are reputable because they know each other, and they build on their identity, on their reputation. Um, so we figured that the time to do it is, is now because yeah, probably a financial, financial crisis will hit again or something like uh, like you said, like a nuclear uh, uh, power. We have strong, network, st strong network structures. Um, we also see the self-organizing uh, communities on the rise and of course the technology is making it possible and that's why we felt that the time is now. Um, so we started building the, the Locals app, um, which we are saying that this is a sort of a tool belt. This is an introduction of ALAPS, but we already done that, so let's skip that. So the concept is um, <coughs> Locals is a decentralized app. Um, Bless you all. <laughs> Many people. We want to have uh, easy interacting with the smart contract, so we don't want oh. to have like this tech kind of application that only people who understand blockchain technology can use it. We want to make it as simple as possible. Uh, and for us, for us, it's a tool belt uh, to interact uh, with this with this local community. So we're not like imposing how 
uh, networks uh, or communities should be formed. We are just giving them a number of tools that they can use to help uh, build and, and uh, sustain their community. Um, and of course, yeah, the, the social economics, so which are in the value transfer and building up your reputation, they tend to align people around the common goal. So the common goal being all of the terms that you put in, into the um, into your community. Um, I'm just going to sum this up. These are the, the parts that we have we have been building or are, are still are building. Um, so we have the, uh, the locals world, which is the, the container application. You have uh, the local communities to manage um, the co communities themselves. You have the local coin, which is the, the coin that can be used to, va to exchange value. Uh, we will show a small demo of that later on. Sure. No? Okay. Yeah. Um, then um, we have the, the local rep, which is, which is another coin that we, we have minted to represent the reputation within a certain community. Um, and then to organize the whole uh, local ecosystem, so that's like building, maintaining, and further evol evolving the app. We've also created a new um, token, which is called the Local Foundation Token. So we've created the foundation on the Ethereum um, network that allows other people to join uh, the let's say the building of the of the tool itself so yeah we had, we had, maybe that's an interesting thing because we're at a, at a bank a big institution so the city of Antwerp of course um, told us like okay but how how will we invest in this like how, oh no it's not an investment but how will we pay for this because they totally love what we're do what we're doing there but you know I, I've been talking to the Stadsontvanger that's his official title it's like the financial director of the city and I, I, I talked for two hours, and he was like, what? Like, he, he was like, okay, but, but just give me a way to give you guys money. I want to give you guys money, but how are we going to do this? Because, you know, it's never been done before. And so by creating a, a foundation uh, and a new token, um, well, um, the city uh, is able to, um, you know, to buy these tokens, uh, basically buying into itself. So it's a... It's a strange thing, but you know, th th in that way, they had some legal kind of framework or economic framework to do this. Can we just show this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you can skip through. Yeah. The, uh, so yeah, I just want to show if, if we can do a demo. That would be awesome. Um, so basically, in locals, what you can do once you start up the app is you just create an identity. Um, and then you can buy for five local coin. You can buy a community. We call that a club in, in inside the app. Um, in in every club, um, you have you can choose your governance model. Like, do you want meritocracy? Uh, I don't know all these. Uh, maybe other people know all these. Sorry, a dictatorship. Why not? Why not? It could be. I don't know if anybody will join your your club. <laughs> But could, yeah, it could be like that. For instance, uh, if, if you look at firefighters, that would be a dictatorship. Basically. But it's a good thing that it's a, it's a dictatorship. You don't want to vote. You know, like you know, the house burning. Should we do that or not? I mean, you want a dictator that says like, yeah, yeah we're going to do that. Um, but in other, you know, it, it depends on the on what you want to achieve on the outcome. Uh, every club has its own reputation system and its own uh, uh, cryptocurrency, its own token on, on Ethereum, basically. And um, yeah, and then you can, you know, can come together with some people and make up your own rules, basically. Um, so, last question. Sure. How would this uh, club token, if you like, how, how would that get its value? Is there like a decentralized marketplace that you would float this on? That, that, how, how would you determine the value of your club token? Let's say your soccer club. The thing is that we... That's up to the club, basically. Well, it depends on what they want to achieve. You know, if they say, for instance, uh, we want to start a new playground for children in, in a certain uh, neighborhood, then it could, then the token could work as a, uh, as a crowdfunding thing. But basically, that's not different than what, what Ethereum. I mean, we're just uh, putting a little layer on top of that. I mean, it's, it's basically the same as you would start a new token on Ethereum. Um, it all depends on what you want to do with it. I mean, and the value of the token is yeah, what people believe that the value is, of course. Maybe um, I can add one of the one of the examples that we've uh, we've worked out together with the city of Antwerp. So we have the local coin as a coin to exchange value. Um, so in the city of Antwerp, they can say, okay, 
we we have some incentives that we want the citizens to do. Uh, like for example, they have like uh, I don't know the, the English name. It's called uh, Afalstratus, so it's. Oh, I know that one. Recycle, <laughs> recycle stations. Yeah. Yeah. So with all these small things. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's very yeah. small. It's it's like in in the street and it's like deployed throughout mm -hmm. the whole city. It's not like a central place outside of the city. So it's it's amongst the city. Mm -hmm. um, so in one of the things that uh, so the city they has they have a, a number of advantages for their citizens. Like for example, they have a price to go to a to a public um, to swimming, swimming, swimming pool. pools. For example, they have other facilities that they have people pay for the um, library and waste disposal. Yeah, those kind of things. So the city itself they could buy into these tokens and have and incentivize people to do, for example, maintenance on these. Um, yeah, recycling stations. The recycling stations. So if if someone wants to, to clean it up a little bit or applies to do some maintenance on that, they could earn uh, these local coins for doing that work. And that would be a way to exchange value because in the city of Antwerp you have now the Akartpunt, which is a sort of a loyalty point system. So um, if you like visit um, um, a museum, for example, you get these loyalty points and you can exchange them into, in, for example, the, the, uh, so the tourist shop. That, the, um, yeah, you can do it. Well, it's, it's actually like that now. If you have an A card, it's like a loyalty card, and you go to museum, you, you go to recycle stuff, and you collect points, and then you can use these points to have a free swimming uh, uh, booth. Damn, it's, it's really difficult to, because it's all Dutch uh, in the city of Antwerp, of course. Uh, but Okay, you have advantages. You, you can, you, you know, you can use this in the city to do stuff. Yeah. So the the idea is that uh, you can incentivize people to earn these coins, which don't necessarily represent a monetary value, but they represent some sort of a service or a thing they do, which is aligned with that specific community. <coughs> so if they help the community, they get rewarded with tokens, and these tokens can be exchanged for something that's actually valuable to them. So they could exchange their um, their token, it's a silly example, of course, for free swimming, uh, for a free entrance to the swimming pool, because the city has all these kinds of services that they offer to their citizens, but they also have a lot of costs associated with, for example, the maintenance um, of all their infrastructure, and so they can combine these two things and use the local coin as an intermediary for doing that value exchange without um, being really monetary value. Yeah, on an, on an, but I, I'm not an economist, of course, but somebody told me on an economic like sales kind of thing uh, that the city has lots of um, services that people now perceive as being free and, and but, but they are worth something of course and by by introducing their own token um, for the first time they can express this value and can make it value, val, valuable um, so but I, I mean I understand what this guy was saying but I, I can't you know uh, I can explain it um, but that's like the main thing that we create, or that we create a, a, a form of value exchange for things that people before saw as free or not valuable at all. Um, is uh, so there's this Belgian company Bernard Vita. Yeah. Similar projects in, in yeah. the interview. So he's involved in this as well. Uh, and I, uh, it's one of his colleagues is uh, we we talk to okay. a, a lot. Yeah, well, we've been talking to a lot of like economics professors and universities, and um, but now we haven't met personally yet. Uh, but uh, what's his name again? The other one? Yeah, I forgot. Okay, but the yeah. Is kind of yeah, 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 but we follow his work. Yeah. Currencies, alternative currencies. Yeah, I don't think we, we just weren't able to, to you know to, to set up a meeting and then you know the whole arcade city thing happened. So. Okay, fine. Um, so yeah, the rep it's 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 a reputation coin. It's just like everybody is trying to figure this out. How how can we do reputation on on a blockchain? Um, so yeah, we we did a really basic approach to that, where we you know uh, where people can come up with rules like uh, for w for what kind of actions or transactions will we mint new rep coins in our club, um, and so the community should decide what they see as a, a good behavior or bad behavior, um, uh, but that's something that's you know we just we just provide them with the tools and they have to make up their own rules. And they can program, or you can just you know drag and drop. Like okay, if you do this and you can prove it, then you'll get rep, uh, rep coin. 
So it's really, really basic because other people, like really smart people, are working on this, on the whole reputation thing. And, and I mean, yeah, we always try to find like niches or places where, where you know, other people are not thinking about. Um, so yeah, the foundation, it's basically, uh, ah, yeah, it's a DAO. Every time I see this word, I, <laughs> I get a little bit sad. But uh, it follows the same principles, but without the split function. <laughs> <laughs> we took that out. Uh, so now we, 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 yeah, we just created the, the foundation token, and what we did is like people like but now we, we, we didn't get to them, but but other smart people that are not, that are not in, in touch with blockchain technology, um, like economics people, philosophers, uh, we we have tried to uh, identify like twelve people in in Belgium that now have local foundation tokens, um, which they find cool because they know that if they you know, put in the work or the intellectual work, maybe they will be worth something someday. Um, but it's, it's all an exercise, of course, in, in, in how we can do these kind of new things. Um, the purpose of ALAPS, by the way, is not to, to, you know, to create products that are fully functional or that are production ready. Our, our, our um, um, you know, at the end of the year, um, when is it, I think, so yeah, our evaluation is not on um, actual project, but is in, in how many people we inspired with what we're doing. So we try to talk to somebody, uh, to one person every day, and and they should, you know, leave the conversation with, oh fuck, I didn't know that was possible, and then boom, then we we reached our goal for the day. So. Um, so yeah, there's this, we have been playing with like voting and stuff. Um, uh, even before the DAO, we had this uh, Polymer component because we do most of our front end prototyping in Polymer. Um, yeah, we have some. You, you can check that out on our GitHub account. There's tons of um, components that that interact with with contracts. I think you need to explain what Polymer is. Oh, sorry, Polymer is like a front end framework. Uh, I think Google released a couple of years ago. Um, um, yeah, I always have to be really careful in how to state this, uh, because if you say it's the next Angular JS, people start throwing with tomatoes, <laughs> and if you say it's something like Ang Ang Angular, then but, but it's just basically it's, it's web components, like it's a it's a native thing in in in, um, in in most modern browsers. But Google, you know, they uh, they made like um, their own standard, you could say, and polyfills stuff like that. But it's basically you can quickly. What we what we need to do is like the components we create like um, it, it's the same as Angular, but it's, it's it's just a little bit easier if you do rapid prototyping. Polymer is way easier to to come up with interfaces, and you can you can shuffle the interfaces around all the time. And we'll show a, a demo later. Yeah, we can show that. If you want. So locals today, we have created the locals foundation. There's a little movie about that on uh, YouTube somewhere, um, and we 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 are. Looking, still looking for talent. Maybe not, not, not directly for the local foundation, but we are always looking for talent. Um, and the local foundation is now thinking. So th those are all people that are that don't have a technical background. They're just thinking about okay, <coughs> use cases. Um, what can we do with with this technology? And the local foundation is making proposals uh, for the future. What is this? Yeah, this is also some basic stuff. But I think we've yeah, we already talked about that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is. I think we've we've all covered that. Um, I just wanted to add one more thing, which in one of the um, um, the previous talk was mentioned about um, yeah, adding proofs and, and the regulatory system, which uh, which puts a burden or puts a a strain on, on further evolving these things. I want to give a small example of the government uh, system. One of the first examples where we used uh, the blockchain technology for was when somebody moves in the city. So they move from another, from another city and they're going to live in Antwerp. Uh, there's a regulation which is uh, nationally, um, uh, which is enforced nationally that someone has to check if that person actually lives there because there's a lot of fake um, uh, fake uh, other people that they say that they live there but they don't actually live there um, so the thing is that uh, one of the first things we we did was with the blockchain which enables us to build uh, a network of trust 
so the thing that happens now is that the police officer goes. Uh, so when someone applies for a, for a move, um, a police officer goes to that location and checks if the person is actually there. But there are a lot of problems with that. First, being that uh, the city has to pay for those for that personnel. Um, also, these people they don't like going into other people's houses. Um, also, the police officers they just come into a street or a neighborhood where they've never been before. Um, they and they just they want to be out as quickly as possible. So it's not uh, like they they really want to see that the person is actually living there. They just want to put a stamp on a form to say okay, it's 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 covered. So the idea that we had there is that. Um, so the national laws, they state that this, this process has to happen, but it doesn't state or it doesn't enforce to the cities how they should do that, that check. So one of the things we have come up with is that um, the blockchain would enable us, with, so also with the, the locals as, a, as an application, um, would allow people who want to move somewhere to ask their neighbors to verify if they actually live there. So and you can put that in a smart contract and you can say, okay, if I want to prove, I want to state that I live at this address, I have to have two confirmations from my neighbors, for example. Um, if we have that, we, you can build up this network of trust. So the first uh, people that will be validated will, of course, be validated by, let's say, city officials, but they are, let's say, the, the seed nodes of that web of trust and they can validate other people, and they can then still validate other people. So you have a closed group that, that you build up, so this network you build up. Um, and then the only thing the city has to do is say, okay, now we have two possibilities. If you move, you either apply for uh, an official to come and check if you actually live there, or you come with two validations of two other validated members that's, um, that's, that claim that you live there. So. That's, that could be an implementation of how, um, how the city actually accepts the way um, that the move happens. So that's an, an opportunity we've made a small move. Here. Yeah, the cool thing is we have a great designer in our team as well. And he does all this After Effects stuff. And so this is the move we showed to like our CEO and he and was really happy. <laughs> Frank is moving. This is like the little, the little clip, and then they were like, "What?" So then we had to put like three-minute explanation after the, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so here we tell the, the little story because it's, it's actually quite different. Um, you know, within like the company city of Antwerp, people are like, they cannot imagine that people would do this by themselves. You know, it has been for in their memory, it, it's been always like that that some official needs to. You know, come into your house and say like, uh, "Yeah, I see you live here, so you live here." And um, so we always thought that 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 we would be thrown off of you know the the, the top of the building when we when we present this. But um, especially in the top management layers, people love the idea that they can that that people would be able to do this um, um, like this. So we we did we worked out this for, as a prototype. Um, but as always, uh, we had one big problem with our A-Labs, and, that and that's that we don't actually have a community to test this out with. So we, we have been creating technology and solutions like this for you know, the last year, maybe more. But then the next step is, of course, that you find people that actually start using this and start experimenting with it. And yeah, that's, that's uh, the problem, I think. Um, Maybe in, in the Netherlands, people are a little bit further, but I think we don't have that kind of culture. Everything is arranged by government and, and, and organizations. And so, yeah, we'll talk about that later. 
Maybe I want to uh, show two more things. Uh, so first, I would like to uh, to show the the app itself, yes. just to give you an idea how. Uh, is, this, is this still working? How this work? Yeah, it's it's not because some of this of the things apparently don't work here. But I'm going to show you. You could try on this URL. It should be still should be live. I'm going to try it right now here. Oh, did you see the URL? Oh. We can post in the comments of the the meetup. Sure, um, sure. I would suggest not to spend too much time to get a demo working. Okay. Because um, you're halfway, more, more than halfway your Are we halfway so yet? Maybe it's the good moment to <coughs> segue to the other project. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can and do that. If that's okay with you. Sure. Okay, so just say that. Can we do quick token transfer? Uh, we could try, but I don't know if it's. Uh, we did test this, right? So we shouldn't do it. No, the idea. So this is uh, the thing is that uh, so this is the app. So it's now on. Uh, it's not. So this uh, this is the way it looks on mobile. So if you check it, if you just open it, um, for regarding identity, we just have like two things that we, we are publishing. Uh, so there's an avatar image and, and a username, and that is automatically associated with um, with the public uh, key. So an um, address on the Ethereum. Maybe a little question: Who is developing or interested in like seeing code? Ah, oh, we're amongst friends here. Yeah. So it's a developer oh, meetup. So okay, cool, cool. <laughs> so what do we? Uh, we are. So this uh, application is really a um, a DAP in the sense that it only has a front end and just communicates with uh, some decentralized backend system. So we are using two things here. It's uh, IPFS, uh, interplanetary file system. So it's decentralized storage that we use. Uh, to save the avatar image and uh, the username and then so the, the hash the ipfs hash <coughs> is stored inside of a smart contract associated with um, the public key here so the thing we can do now uh, just to show because as you see the like the ethereum address it just displayed here information uh, as information so nobody you don't have to be aware even that you're working on a blockchain um, here you see so this is the local coin balance that I have. Sorry, um, like here. So you have several functionalities like adding a club, but this is the part that doesn't work. So I unfortunately can't show it here because if, if I click it, it stays empty. So something goes wrong here. Um, one of the interesting uh, things to mention is that so one of the things we want to do is do value exchange. So in this case, in local coin. And the method to do that efficiently and easy um, is to use Whisper. So I don't know who knows Whisper as a protocol or heard of it. Okay. Um, so it's especially so it's an extra layer on top of Ethereum that allows you to do point-to-point -point communication between uh, between devices or between DApps, as they call it. And the thing we are doing here is if I want to send local coin to someone, um, I just have to enter an amount and say two. But that's the important thing, uh, the two, because uh, let me close this. Um, if I want to receive a local coin from someone, I just click it open and it generates this short code. And what happens behind the screen? It's not like this thing. No, it's not. But I mean, yes, yeah, right? Is that it opens up a whisper channel and it starts listening to that short code. And if so, if Michael would now send some uh, local coin to me just have to enter, so I just have to show him the short code. Uh, that short code, um, then, so if I, I'm listening to that short code, so he publishes his public key to my short yeah, code, and my whisper, uh, my, whis my whisper client will catch that message, and so therefore I know the public address, so the, the public key of Michael, and then I can send tokens uh, to Michael, or I can send my public key back to you, and you can send me your tokens. So well, it's, a little, it's, it's, it's a little bit more interesting, even because the first thing we do is, you can explain that better, but the first thing we do is like negotiate over a key, a new uh, uh, encryption key, and once that encryption is established, uh, only then do we send like public keys and stuff like that. So the, it's point to point. In, the whole app is point to point encrypted. Um, I want to one more little technical thing before we go to. Um, uh, so we don't want like thinking back to the nuclear explosion. Uh, we don't have servers. We don't have data centers. So that was a, a big thing to think about. So what you see here. I hope you can see this. Yeah. 
<laughs> so if you see the the we we basically created a local API um, and we store the data is is always stored encrypted in local storage. So the only thing you need to do if you start the app is choose a password, and with that password we encrypt like the whole thing. Um, only the user data cache is it's just like the avatar and the username that is not encrypted. Uh, but you know, like your whole life inside locals is uh, is always encrypted and is only stored uh, locally. Um, then people say, "Yeah, but what if I lose my device?" Right? No. No. Okay. People say that. <laughs> people say that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we just do. We created this. Uh, this yeah, this really simple. Oh, wow. Is is there rubbery going on? <laughs> Uh, so what we do is we just download, uh, we just create a JSON object from this, and and you can download it as a JSON now. But of course, next steps would be uh, that you can you know uh, sync it with uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, whatever you you wanna you you, you feel safe with. Um, and um, but it's an encrypted um, user object. So should we wait on the lights? Are you guys comfortable sitting in the dark? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe other wor um, thing yes. worth mentioning is that uh, so all this all this stuff is uh, open source and we have a, a GitHub account uh, so yeah. open somewhere. But so it's uh, so if you want to uh, know more about locals, um, there's a locals world GitHub account. It's uh, everything we have been doing for the last two years is is of course open because we, you know people that pay us are like citizens and we think everything is open. That's like the policy of the city of Antwerp. Everything we create is open source. Um, we changed that like three years or more. Four years ago, we changed that policy. Um, uh, where And now the law is you have to argue why something is not transparent and is not shared with the community. So so we turn that around, which I think is pretty cool for the for government. So, but I'm going to do the little segue. Yeah, sure. I hope I don't run from uh, Cliff. Um, so our problem was as follows. So we, we thought like, wow, we're, we're developing these cool tools and stuff, but nobody wants to play with it. So it was really frustrating because in the end, you want to you know, you wanna, you wanna sit on a, on a bus or a tram in Antwerp and you want to see people using your app, of course. Um, and um, so we were constantly looking for communities that, that would, would, you know, wanted to work with this or, or, or would, would want to experiment with what we're doing. And then suddenly we met Arcade City.